um, and welcome. I'm Shell Culp. I'm um, the Chief Deputy Director for Office of Systems Integration and the Agency Information Officer for Health and Human Services Agency. And with me is Ron Hughes. I have to get very close to him so that he can get, uh, you know, so the sound can pick up. Come on in and sit down, please. Um, and I have to, like, minimize the time away from, you know, behind the camera. So go ahead, Ron. No, so I, I'd like to welcome all of you. You know, this, we, we hope this is a real interactive session. Uh, we want to find out what your thoughts are on shared services, cloud services, and ways for local governments and the state to work together. So that's the whole purpose of this, uh, this group. Okay, so you have noticed that the, the, the chairs are arranged somewhat differently than the other rooms you've been in, hopefully. Um, so what we want to do is an actual interactive conversation. We want you to share your thoughts with us and we have some I have some questions. Oops, I can't turn my back to the camera. Uh, so everybody knows right by now that, that all of these sessions are being f uh, filmed and I'm going to sit right here next to Ron so that uh, if he has thoughts and comments uh, they'll get picked up on the mic. Um, and if, how are we supposed to ha get their thoughts and comments? Am I supposed to go over and stand next to them? Or repeat the question, okay? So we have some questions that we would like people's um, take on. Everybody up for this? Yeah, okay. Let's go. This turned completely around. You thought we were gonna stand up there and do a presentation. Yeah. We did. <laughs> we did trick you. Um, but we got tricked a little bit too, so uh, we're, we're gonna make it work. These aren't my magazines. These must be your magazines. You gonna autograph those or something? You're on the cover. Okay. So first off, um, how many people made it to the uh, security uh, session this morning? Okay, so out of that session, I wasn't there because I had another session going on, but out of that session, what, uh, what was the dominant theme out of that session? What was, what was um, uh, were there questions asked in the session that gave you uh, uh, some sort of inkling of how people are thinking about security in the cloud? was that everybody had the concerns of exactly that, security in the cloud. But overall, the point was, if you apply your security, you are fine in the cloud. You guys agree with that? Okay. So, given that, um, what, does, what about this notion of shared services in the cloud? Uh, what, what, what would shared services in the cloud mean to you? So my data is on a um, my data is on a um, infrastructure shared with another entity, okay, not so my own. How does that make you feel, Andrea? Depending on the uh, <laughs> 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 depending on the classification of the data, uh -huh. I could be very fine with it, mm -hmm. or I would not want to do it. Anyone? R response? Thoughts? What is what is what does shared services mean to you in the cloud? Actually, could be in a plethora of things going all the way from perspective of New just. I could count on you, David. You could. <laughs> 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 it could go from a, from the point in which you actually are sharing uh, services, as in servers. Mm -hmm. Also, could go to the other end of the spectrum, which is the, the basically that you actually have your own segregated environment in that cloud mm -hmm. environment that uh, is only specific to you. Um, so, in between th that particular range uh, and. And then also, it will also depend on how the services are provided, whether in fact uh, you have a provider or you yourself actually act in a provider, and, and, and also passing that out to other individuals. So I guess the whole range is possible. So, it's so what, in that range, right. where do you want to share services? I actually would like to share the, well, in terms of sharing CPUs or uh, the, other, the other area to share the services would be in terms of where we have like business practices and can actually buy systems that actually reduce our uh, overall cost so that we in fact are working jointly together uh, as a group. Uh, it could be health services, it could be law enforcement services, it could be all the different agencies have um, have some kind of business mission that they're doing but if there are pieces that are similar uh, to the extent that we're able to meet each other's needs jointly and reduce our investment in IT, I think that is probably the 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 best, the best take or best cut into it. So, d does uh, w where does anyone else want to share services? I can share services anywhere that meets my business needs, as long as I can leverage. Where do you want to share services? Where do I want to share services? Exactly. Um, wherever I can gain an advantage. 
Have you given some thought though? I mean, you, you, you know, sort, sort of like, what, what, what are you thinking? Um, Come on in. Storage services, computing resources, um, security services, um, securing environments, common security environments, uh, all the whole whole gambit. So you're ready to share. I'm not, I didn't say I'm ready to share. You asked me where I'm thinking oh, about. Oh, okay. <laughs> so who's ready to share There's services? <laughs> you are. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm way down here in the back. I'm, I'm going to have to stand in front of you. Well, and, and that's the reason why we came to this conference, to see how we can share our services. We're very interested, with the city of Fresno oh, yes. is very interested in sharing data cross-agency. Um, so uh, certain planning development data with our educational community, so our, our unified school district um, and housing authority to reach um, data that um, is common between students, housing, um, permitting processes, when code enforcement goes out to uh, uh, building to, so that we can actually share support services if there's an issue in the neighborhood. Excellent. Anybody else? Ready to share? Already sharing? Okay, so those of you who are not, why not? She said she's not there yet. I'm not going to walk over and get that from her. What about the rest of us? What does not there yet mean? Well, we're building a private cloud, so I see that the <gasps> next iteration... What? You're building a private cloud? Yeah. I don't think anybody told me about that. Oh, you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> a little one at FDC, okay. sort of. Yeah. Um, so I see the next um, iteration is you know looking at the cloud that's why we're here is we're interested in it. i've gone to a couple of seminars i went to something in san diego and anyway uh, i see that's where we're going it's just it's like a iterative you can kind of omit the details yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an iterative process to get there so we're getting closer anybody else why why are you why are we uh, afraid to share are we afraid to share is that what i'm hearing cloud. Can you say that one more time, Alicia? Um, we, may <laughs> we may not be, it may not be that we don't want to share, but mm -hmm. are we prepared to share? What does it take to get to the cloud? What does it take to get to the cloud? Anyone? What does it take to get to the cloud? What will make you comfortable to get to the cloud? Can, can I ask one question? What is anybody in the room uncomfortable with the infrastructure as a service, where we simply where you simply get out of the hardware business, now you've got shared hardware. Is anyone uncomfortable with that level of cloud services? As long as bandwidth and capacity planning is done properly, then it shouldn't be an issue as long as you can continue to grow based on volumes of what your historical data has been. Um, and then the second realm of that is the infrastructure is how do we know that it is secure through firewalls or through the structure and um, being able to make sure that there's a, a trust and confidence level that we can get there? So, just throw out my thoughts on that. So if, if we give you the ability to provision resources, does that take away your first concern? You can actively scale your system up or down based on access to a portal. So, you know, we're not controlling what resources you have, you are. So you're saying that we would do that? Yeah, you would have access to a portal, you could assign resources, you could scale up or scale down as you see fit. You might as well just stay there. <laughs> would, would that make you more comfortable? I think it would be because, you know, we, if we have a business and we have to make sure that we can serve our so as long as you have control over the infrastructure in the infrastructure as a service service offering, you're comfortable with it. I don't know that control is my word. I think you know control of the amount of resources. The amount of resources and be able to extend it. Although I think it, it boils down to uh, it's control of the resources, but it's actually control of the resources on behalf of the business interest. Now it's 
the issue is not necessarily, I think, IT. It's the, the issue is business. And the fact that the agency uh, owners actually want to be able to control that. And so if, in fact, uh, you made that services available via the, um, uh, the cloud solution, but they can continue to, to direct and drive those um, uh, the services as they need or as they need to change them, I think that, that becomes uh, the carrot that is of interest. I also know that it's a real paradigm shift just selling cloud services to the business folks. I don't think they get it. I mean, I know they know that you're, the, the, it's out there, but even as, even as an IT person trying to sell that concept, is, it's a leap. So um, it's, a, it's, it's also a movement of dollars from one area. So you're going to not buy the servers. You're not going to buy um, uh, the, um, yeah, and you're going to give it to someone else. And, and it's that guarantee. At least we're looking for more. So, and, and just sort of talking about the second part of your question, which is security. Um, would you be comfortable if, if there were minimum levels of security? Again, that a, a, a governance group composed of, in our case, customers and vendors and OTEC staff agree to the minimum level of security standards. You can't go below. And then we give control of the security over to you. If you want to encrypt your network traffic, if you want higher levels of security, you can assign them. Again, our thought on the cloud is we're giving control back to the departments. You're going to manage your own environment. And we're going to have minimum levels you can't go below. We're not going to, you know, allow you to run a firewall wide open. But, you know, you control it. W would you be comfortable in that environment? There's a lot of details. I, I, there, are. So <laughs> there are. There are. <laughs> you know, we I wait for simple things. There's a lot of details in that. Yeah. Ron, even though I, 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 I'll pose it the other way, which is, if you in fact had an environment where all those have been done for you, and in fact you have been told that not only has the security been done, or not has it been vetted, not only have the vendors who are coming in, would you actually uh, go across? that you don't have to worry about it and that someone else is actually guaranteeing all the time that, that things are maintained at a certain level and a certain bar. Uh, mm -hmm. I think um, I think that would be much more tempting, right? Because I think that's a huge investment. So I, I, I'd probably pose it that way. And, and, and you know, every, everybody talks about the cost savings because, oh, it's going to be cheaper, but it's going to be easier to support. I, if all those things are true, if you've got redundancy and reliability built in, if you've got minimum levels of security built in, if you if you're always on the latest patch in terms of security for the operating system, that's a lot of things you no longer have to worry about. And, and I'm just curious what the thoughts are on that. In reference to the security, when you talk about security, especially in light of uh, just a couple weeks ago, the Fed, federal government's going to uh, uh, expand their cyber terror program pretty extensively. Um, so by one, opening everything up and going to cloud environments, um, one of the, the, the big issues is, is compliance. How do you ensure that there's compliance <coughs> when you are essentially turning over services that we've done uh, as a state to another entity and ensuring that those security protocols are maintained, as you said, like the patches <coughs> and things of that nature, and policies as it, as it derived from NIST or whatever uh, formal protocol we have here in the state. So I, you know, that, that, that's a really good point. Obviously, there's going to have to be a process where you follow up to make sure they are complying. There's going to be audits. Uh, you know, I, I don't have all the answers today, but I, I, I'll tell you it's the direction that everybody is heading. And, and I meant it when I said I was at a meeting of the CIOs and every CIO in 2013 is going to roll out cloud services, every state. And so we're going to have to deal with these challenges. And to my way of thinking, it really is going to give us an opportunity to get security right. I mean, you know, we have in the state of California, we have a wide variety of departments, a wide variety of experience and maturity with security solutions. So if you look at OTEC, we're, we're a perfect example. We have an area where we lease floor space to customers. Well, there's all different levels of sophistication. We have customers that put in firewalls and never touch them. We have customers that actively manage their firewalls. When those 
services eventually move into to the cloud service offering, they're going to have minimum levels of security. They're going to have the latest patches on their operating system. They're not going to be two years behind on, on patching. You know, but that's really, that is the environment we have in certain portions of OTEC today. So, and again, I'm just using us for an example because I'm most familiar with OTEC. I'm sure in your departments you're in the same position as well. <coughs> but I really think that, you know, we're going to get an opportunity to do it right. You don't get these opportunities very often. So we're actively seeking input on how we should manage our cloud service offering. And I, and I really don't want this to be about OTEC because this, is, this forum is really about cloud services in general. But, um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, dealing with these challenges is something that we're going to have to figure out. So let's take it out of OTEC for a second, <laughs> since yeah. you don't want this to be out of, uh, around OTEC. What are, what are some of the things that you worry about when collaborating in the cloud that are, that are maybe not the security issues, right? So we, we talked about the, some of the things that would make it feel more warm and fuzzy. If those things were in place, would you, would you consider using it? There's got to be some other things that, uh, that you think about that uh, when, you, when you think about collaborating in the cloud, what what is what's a barrier for you in in, uh, uh, in adopting this technology? I'm going to move over here to Gretchen because I know she's got one. I'm going to wait for you to get to the part with uh, about the benefits. What are the benefits for? Uh <laughs> I think there's a tremendous amount of benefits with it. You know, we're we're all facing the same challenges with reduction in staff. Our budgets are being impacted the needs of the business aren't decreasing. So how do we as CIOs and technology managers adjust the way that we're operating today to continue to meet those needs? What are we really in the business to do? Are we in the business of infrastructure or are we in the business of meeting the needs of the business through providing automation for the, the, uh, the processes and things that program is responsible for? And, and I, would, I would say that it's the latter. If you don't have as many staff today to provide the service in the way that you were doing before, I see cloud is a very flexible opportunity for us to continue to meet the needs of business in a cost-effective way, in a way that we're able to be more responsive with the faster provisioning. So this is some of the reasons why I, I'm asking folks to, to look at opportunities within the cloud. Uh, maybe we start out small in the beginning uh, with some office automation type functions and then we start to look at the bigger opportunities once we start to feel more comfortable with that. But I see the, the um, the, the fear or the hesitation being very similar to going from mainframe to mid-range, right? We can't possibly do that where everything's on mainframe. We feel very comfortable here, but we've progressed in that way. So now this is a similar challenge, and I think it'll take a little bit of time to, to pick up, but I, I think there's a tremendous value in it. Comments? David. <laughs> Since I've been having this. <laughs> <laughs> It's the David and Ron show. Yeah, <laughs> I will say that one of the one of the things that that worries me about moving to the cloud um, is the stakes are higher, and the stakes are higher in the sense that if in fact I have a consolidated environment and I got a couple people that are really my gurus for that environment, and something happens to them, I've taken a whole lot of people down with me um, if something goes wrong. So I worry about uh, that kind of a. a choice uh, in terms of being the converse. Um, the other one that I've actually had to think about was um, in having, uh, in my case, uh, having law enforcement agencies that are very interested in being part of the pool that want to share or take advantage of uh, applications or pieces that are similar that they can, they can take part of. There is the fact that you got to cater them and actually help them along. But that, that, that being you being the, uh, the uh, the application or the business uh, person who's familiar with that so that they actually don't have to do the same thing. But on, on the back end of that, then I, I, you have to worry about are you really in the business of, what, what business are you really in? Um, and the, and you gotta find a, you got to find a balance for that. And so that's always... Um, well, you would be in a new <laughs> business at that point, wouldn't you? It is you? a new business, and, yeah. and, that's, and that's a business that I think uh, a, 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 an agency is not necessarily in the business of it, and they're trying to find while it, it, it facilitates the concept of the fact that you're, you're working together as agencies and as, as partners, but you're not it is not your core primary mission, uh, mission of business. 
But that said, I, I know a, a thing or two about the agency that you work for, and, really? uh, <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure that they want to continue maintaining and owning their applications, right? Not, not, so, not, not change. <laughs> um, you know, uh, who in this room would would give up ownership of their applications to be able to share, uh, you know, somebody else's <coughs> to be able to share David's application? No one. Look at uh, the, the the heads are nodding. No, no one. I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, well, so so then I guess that begs the question of how do we how do we collaborate in the cloud? No one wants to give up ownership of their applications, right? Or are you guys just really shy? Yeah, that's it, huh? Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Yeah. No. How do we collaborate if everybody owns their own stuff? Putting out your infrastructure, and even if it is separated by security for customers, you're still going to get the benefit of that. So, what are you sharing thing? at that point? You are sharing an infrastructure. So, infrastructure is comfortable to share. <coughs> We're okay loading our applications. David's saying this. David over here is saying, Ooh. yeah, he's okay. <laughs> he's comfortable loading his his own his own applications on shared infrastructure. If okay, we always have different concerns. Right now. Uh, we have examples of, okay, somebody needs more storage. Oh, we don't have it. We have to, that's going to take six months to procure storage. You have to, and that's, I'm, I'm thinking of a public cloud or hopefully replacement private clouds, that that piece of the automation or planning is improved. You see even um, virtual solutions. I always have the fear and have seen examples. As soon as you want more servers, oh, we don't have enough memory. You can't get eight gigs of memory on your system or CPUs or different things. So there's different concerns that should be addressed in there. Then I would say, yes, a shared infrastructure should be comfortable. Okay, so what we're still on infrastructure. We're not sharing applications yet. You can share this. Dale's like, no, we're not sharing applications. I have a, a comment or a question. When we talk about shared applications, I understand if we're talking about something that we truly own, mm -hmm. which is a few old things. Most of the stuff, the office productivity, the things that we mm -hmm. utilize, we don't really own them. We license them from large vendors, so uh, it's kind of hard to talk about sharing those kind of things. Right. Okay, well, let's uh, uh, switch it to services in your service-oriented architecture. Right, because you're, uh, you know, what we're talking about in this shared space is building applications, perhaps. I mean, there's there's infrastructure too, but building applications that have services that can be exposed that I can consume. Are we okay sharing those things? Fresno's okay. I can go share them at Fresno. We don't have, a, we don't have the budget anymore. The luxury of a budget of having our own services and applications and and products and. We have to look for al alternatives, and one of the you know political issues is sharing um, like the ERP solution. Every city has to have their own ERP solution. Everybody does payroll. Why can't that be a service that could be shared and save billions of dollars on licensing fees when everybody pretty much does the same thing to pay their employees? Yeah. So that's the type of service that we're looking at sharing, and I don't care if I own it in Fresno or if I just have use of it somewhere else. We're looking for a paradigm shift too with our application developers and providers. So something different than a per licensee fee structure is going to have to be envisioned to maximize the shared services in, in, in the cloud, so that you, as a uh, as the purveyor now of these cloud services, can offer the service and have a known cost of expanding it to more customers. I haven't heard that come from the industry yet. Does the, oh, the industry people just left. <laughs> oh, wait, Anand's still here. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's a, that's a very important point, I think, is, uh, you know, how, how, do, how do you guys make it easy for us to share? No pressure, Anand. <laughs> Well, I think um, I think the technology is there to share. I think it's it's more of um, uh, people manage or, or or the process management thing. People have to change their behavior, and change is hard to come in people, right? So 
So I think the technology is here and the services can be shared just by opening up. If, if, if people are willing to, you know, they don't have to lose the ownership of the application. Like uh, as you were saying that, you know, uh, is, is anybody open to losing the ownership? You don't have to uh, lose ownership. You just can share some services which are applicable to other areas too. And can still own the application. There's a novel idea. Thoughts on that? No thoughts on that. Anne's afraid I'm going to ask her a question. <laughs> the more educated that uh, we become, the more proof of concepts and examples that we see, the more warm fuzzies we get about it being uh, a safe place to move to. I think that's that's huge. That's part of the people to the change in the paradigm of, of how we think, how we think about what it means to be safe and secure and have our data safe and secure. Actually, that's a good point. That that's one of the things that we um, have been talking about is when we first started talking about sharing in the ERP system, it was so political. We took a step back and we wanted a shared application to be successful. So now we're looking at just sharing GIS data or a GIS application. And once you get success with that model, then you can take the next step forward. So hopefully we're on the right path. You guys have all kinds of good intentions out there, but it, uh, it, do you have an ERP system yet for Fresno? We have one. You have one. But we're looking for a better one. Well, we're looking for a more cost-effective, sustainable alternative. So, what if you shared yours with, say, Visalia? Well, and that's not an option, and, and that's exactly why we're looking at the hybrid, um, private cloud, and bringing in some smaller cities to share, but again, it's going to have to be working closely with the vendor so that they can see that there's um, revenue sources that they may not have gone after, but if you go in as a larger group with smaller cities, that could be a, a new charging model. It's not, it's not, it's not that form of formula, Long, law enforcement. I was going to say, it sounds a little bit like email, Ron. <laughs> email or, or law enforcement for years has been the same thing computer to dispatch and you get a, a regional concept in these different dispatch centers have gone with the same vendor then the financial model of that is reflective of multiple sites uh, with unlimited users based on how many dispatch centers and I think similar concept is going to have to be looked at for the application services in the cloud model. Well, and that's really interesting. It's not a foreign concept. We've got uh, a lot of good examples of, of how it works. What do we need to, you know, is it a kick? Uh, what, what do we need to get us over that hump? Okay. Because we're just doing that as a high patrol, where we, in fact, are uh, using a computer dispatch system. I think the heart of it is it's about the data. It's really about the data. Because even uh, the other two agencies who have gotten on board, and we've actually we've actually given them the access to the application. What they want is they want the application, but they want it partitioned so they have control over their data, uh, and not necessarily restrict it to us. The other piece I think that is a perspective that's a little bit different is that if you're a small agency uh, or a small county, it's very critical. You can't afford the the, the dollars for for um, keeping up an IT shop, and so it's very attractive for you for the cloud. It's been the same experience for us as we work with other small law enforcement agencies. It's very different as we work with the bigger players. I just have a quick question. So it, it sounds like, obviously, with the right controls in place, people would be comfortable with infrastructure as a service. It sounds like the issue a lot of people have is software as a service and losing control of their applications. But yet there are some applications that everybody shares already. So what about Office 365, Google Apps? Is everybody comfortable with that as a software as a service offering? Is that a yes? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. you're, you're comfortable with that? No. What about cloud based Didn't LA County try that or with Google? How'd that go? You talk to LA County, they love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They did a proof of concept there, and it, it, it went well. Yeah, it went well there. Uh, no, I, back on security, uh, back on um, uh, computer-aided dispatch, it's more, 
uh, and everybody's whispering here, it's more political than everything. When you have a, the sheriff's department running a computer-aided dispatch, and then you have local police departments, it's more control, more political than what's good for the, the community and cost savings. So that's the barrier you have to get over from a public safety security system. Let it be, uh, you know, <coughs> computer-aided uh, dispatch, E9911, or even with uh, cloud storage. Cloud storage, it's more cost more than anything um, can you do it in-house from a state i'm private just jump to state so can you do it cheaper in-house than can you using otec can you get it cheaper from otec than you can do it in-house and that's where i think it's it's the cost benefit there so from the state government i see that <coughs> if you put in that infrastructure what do you do with the extra PYs um, that you have, or FTEs um, that you have? Can you reduce staff because you've leveraged that? They don't like to do that here in state. So, the co I've, I, from state side, I've never seen the cost benefit. On the private side, you can do that. From cloud versus premise based? Right, mm -hmm. I think. I think some so. of the, the challenges that folks are also looking at is with consolidation. I mean, the intent is that you move from your, your standard environment into a virtual environment and then uh, through AB 2408, moving into a tier three data center. So what options do we all want to have? Do we want to take our servers that we have and put them into a, a tenant managed system so we're confident that that infrastructure that we're, we're grown accustomed to is it looks exactly the same as it always did. Do we have the resources to provide that level of support still? And what, what's a cost effective model? If you, with, uh, with the services that, that are being proposed through OTEC with cloud, you can provision up and down for what your actual utilization is. I mean, I don't know how many of you have, have uh, a server farm that is not being uh, completely utilized, but I know that, that we do. So I'm looking at, at things uh, cost effective from a provisioning perspective so I can scale up and down as I need it. So uh, I think there's uh, some benefit to that from a cost perspective and larger volume. If we're all doing similar things, then you know office automation and such, why wouldn't we want to leverage something that's at a, at a master pooled uh, environment where we're benefiting from the the volume purchases along with that the license cost through master service agreements is what people are probably most familiar with in that that term but if we're looking at, at common business functions that we're providing maybe we start smaller in looking at how do we share those things many of us are using SharePoint how do we put that there and all of us leverage that from a single point uh, and then maybe eventually we get to more of the customized apps based on your particular organization. But there's many things that we all do and support for business that, that are common that we could benefit from. Yeah, I, I agree. But being the first, it always costs you, you know. So <laughs> you, you pay more than, 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 than the, you know, initially if you're the first person, it, 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 it utilizes that service. It costs you a little bit more, and uh, of course, it's it's um, sucks to be the first. But uh, as you get more on the, the of course, it's going to drive the cost. Yeah, so that's good. Mm -hmm. But you've got to start somewhere, like you right. said. So and I conversations and bring some friends with you, right? Right. I mean, a collective group of folks that are, are seeing the benefit in the same way, and don't start out with just one that I'm interested. You know, I have a group of five of us that are interested. How can you work with us to? to make this happen. I, I agree, the, the challenge is where do we start? It's just a, a, even a small group of collective minds that are, are uh, willing to uh, take a little risk and, and stretch yourself out of a comfort zone to, to reap the benefits of it, I think is, is to answer your question, Shell, how do you get over the initial bump? <coughs> Okay, so um, I understand that there's a reception in about half, uh, about an hour, I guess. Um, not sure if it involves adult beverages or not, but um, think of yourselves, put yourselves now, close your eyes, think of yourselves at that reception. You can pick the brains of, uh, of people that uh, have some experience with cloud deployments or cloud um, implementations. Uh, and or you can pick the brains of your colleagues and ask them, you know, what are you going to do first? How are you going to get this done? What is the question that you most want to ask that person standing next to you at the reception? Thinking about it. Other than the one that you, are you buying? 
<laughs> Assume they're buying. <laughs> Assume they're buying. Okay. Where's the beer? Yeah, that's not going to work. I think it's where you start. Ah. Where do you start where it's comfortable, where we can gain some success, and we can see that the customer service is there because we all answer to executives who've got, you know, long memories and all this baggage, and they look to us. They don't look past us. We are the ones that have to answer to them. So it has to be something that will be super successful and, you know, just spot on. And if it's not, then it's not going to go well. Right. That, that's where I was just going to comment as well. Uh, where is the accountability? If, it, if it's not functioning properly, if the customers are not getting what they need, they want the accountability to be right there under their thumb, not somewhere that they can't control. The question I would ask is, who's got the best service or the best service? A lot of promise here about we're all going to go to the cloud and that's great if we're going to set up our own cloud thing. You know, we have cloud services through Microsoft Azure for backup and for disaster recovery. 60 hour outage a couple of weeks ago. Really unacceptable. So I, I'm all for cloud. I am ready to go to cloud. We're already at cloud. It just needs to work and it just needs to be reliable. So. Uh, and I'm happy, to, what, what I think what we're really talking about is, and somebody else mentioned, new paradigms. I mean, the, the paradigms that we have now for supporting services, and especially for office applications, for desktop applications, I would be happy to go to a subscription service or something else so that we don't have to continually pay these licensing fees. And where is the, you know, the economies of scale for the state of California when every department has to pay you know, licensing fees for commonly used applications. So I'm happy to go to email. I'm happy to, to use more shared services and, and get a better deal. But I just want to make sure that the stuff works. So. Good thoughts, David. I think on, raise your hand. Right. Oh, actually, it's covered by him, actually. I, oh. I, I, would want it, I would want to expand the discussion uh, from cost benefit over to getting access to the best of the breed services, best of the breed applications. So if somebody has built great application, then why do I have to build my own? I would want to get access to that. So a benefit-based discussion, I think, would be more fruitful rather than just focusing on the cost savings. Other thoughts for uh, that, that conversation at the reception? How are you going to make the best use of that? bring back again to the conversation of it's not just access, it's reliability. Uh, even if it seems to be the best, it's the reliability. Everybody's talking about accountability and all of that, but it, it really comes down to do I trust uh, Do I trust Ron and his crew? If I can dump everything I've got and say, okay, I'm going with the state. Do I trust that all of those things ultimately come back to me and then somebody says, well, you're the one that told us to go this way. We relied on you. You know, do I trust that that's going to be reliable? And then, to what extent is the redundancy built in to where I put all of my put all of my blocks into? So, okay, Ron, Ron's got this great cloud system, but what's the backup? What happens? What ensures that for me? And so, I've got to build. I've got to get that trust from Ron, and in turn, anybody that's going to look to me for those services. How do they trust that? Do they trust the security? Do they trust the reliability and the accountability? Other questions? Sure. Of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the reliability, that's certainly an issue. And you know, I would argue that you should have a service level agreement that guarantees availability. I've looked at the service level agreement for Microsoft or email. It's pretty onerous. If they don't live up to their commitments, there are huge financial penalties, like 25% a month discount for email. I mean, it's a huge financial Who, who gets that? D does, does the client department get that or does OTEC get that? <laughs> I, I, you know, we I'm would just asking. No, we would certainly <laughs> refund it back to the client yeah. department because, uh, but, um, you know, so I, I, I think we can address reliability. Um, for, for really mission critical applications, we're going to offer 
and, and again, I don't want this all to be about OTEC, but we're going to offer disaster recovery. You're going to have the ability from day one to provision disaster recovery in Vacaville. If you truly have a mission critical system, you should be provisioning disaster recovery somewhere because what are you going to do if your system goes down? And, and they are going to go down. I, I don't care you know, how reliable the design is, things fail. Uh, they might fail once every 10 years, but they're going to fail. So, you know, I'd argue that, you know, when you're designing this solution, you probably need to build in disaster recovery if it truly is that mission critical. And it's always a cost-benefit analysis at some point. Is it worth it to me to have the extra reliability of replicating my environment somewhere else if it costs me 25% more? And, and the, you know, the other thing I wanted to comment on is that, you know, this usage-based model you know, we're kind of at the mercy of some of the software companies because they won't do usage-based. And enterprise license, you know why people are afraid to do enterprise licenses? Because people got fired the last time they tried it in the state. Because of, you know, we won't go into that. That was a while ago, though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but, but, but that's exactly why like people won't again. do it. Can't we, can't we evolve, save some money? I, I, I think software offerings from I think application offerings are going to change. They're going to be more and more usage-based. And everybody's talking about it, but very few people are doing it. So I think that long-term, that's the direction that we're going to go. So I got a question. This is a question that comes up. I, I, I guess it's more of a, when it comes, and, and, I, and I relate to your, 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 your comment about the fact that um, the, the pricing and the tag, you know, I guess one of the questions that really is very clear in our minds is uh, how hard, uh, how hard is um, people doing the procurement fighting on behalf of the state, on behalf of the state, when it comes to that bottom dollar? And having been sent to the role many times, where I've actually been told, "No, go back. We're not going to." Uh, and I, I know, I, I know how tenuous that that can be. Um, sometimes I don't know. The sense doesn't necessarily sometimes come through that we are really beating down, and I hate to say that really fighting for that basic bottom dollar. And, and, and I guess, uh, to put it another way, when we've compared the prices of the same service uh, based to what other state agencies are paying across 50 states, we've always typically, one of our obs observations is that we have we're paying a higher rate. And so I guess that, that, and that, and that is, um, uh, so anyway, just to come it as a picture. And one, one of the things I said when I became director of OTEC is we don't need to be as cheap as a private sector, right. but we can't be three times the cost. You know, we've got to get our costing down to where we're competitive. And that, you know, that's one of the efforts that we're doing right now. And, um, you know, I really think cloud services are going to be, I, I don't want to promise these huge savings because everybody that's done that has gotten into trouble. I can tell you my expectation is there are going to be significant savings, particularly once we start moving production systems into the cloud. I mean, if you look at the numbers, they're 20% of the cost that we charge for storage. I mean, that's, that's a real number. You can look it up. The most expensive storage I've seen is 30% of our cost. So, you know, when, when you start moving those production systems and when you start using those cloud resources, you should see a significant reduction in cost. But trying to predict what that is, I don't know, because it depends on when you migrate, it depends on what you migrate, it depends on the configuration you migrate. There's so many variables. It's impossible to say, oh, you know, you're going to save 70%. I have no idea if you are or not. Any other questions? If you take the discussions just on cost savings, they don't come immediately. In the long term, they definitely come. But if, if, if the whole value proposition is just cost savings, it fails. So we need to bring in other factors like the benefits of cost sharing to get the best of the breed of applications to share. But you don't have to. You're not on your own. People used to own, you know, um, um, in the past days when you have to uh, build a business application, you own the whole vertical stack. People don't do that anymore. If I'm building a website to provide some, you know, uh, you know, some products that I'm making, I don't offer a credit card you know, uh, or, or, or payment service for them. I, I ask PayPal to take care of that, right? So. Other thoughts? Um, okay, so we're, we're just moments away here from wrapping up. Um, let me just ask, uh, I guess from the back of the room because I can't turn my back on the camera. Um, let, let me just ask, we, we heard several folks talk about uh, 
comfort levels around infrastructure if the appropriate security protocols are in place. How many people in this room are, uh, are in progress or contemplating planning within the next one or two years about doing some uh, infrastructure in the cloud? Show of hands. Two. Three. Three. As a what? As a kind of proof, proof of concept for a kind of a static public application. Uh -huh. I mean, today, I if we look at OTEX managed services, that's in, in a form as a cloud or the mainframe. That's that's a cloud where we entrust our, our data, our applications into that cloud. And, you know, this the benefit I would gain from an infrastructure as a service uh, offering, you know, when I deploy a, a server within five clicks in, in that web portal, I would gain the control, which gives me security. I could define my security zones. I could shape I'll be in control of my server, whereas in managed services, I don't. I don't have that control. Sounds like you have experience with cloud things. Oh, a little bit, <laughs> maybe. He's a plant. He's a shill. There's, there's <laughs> some different. I'm not saying everything's ideal yet, but there's some different benefits of managed services that support a lot of different departments. I, I work for Ron, so, I'm, but. You're able to, if, if you did it right, as a complete sort of managed service, you're able to offer different environments, you know, just development, tasks. You're able to offer it by scale, where a customer, typically, they exclude that. Well, we can't afford tests. We can't afford this. So they have single point production systems. There's a lot of things that are lost that you can gain the benefits of a managed service at a higher level that can be shared between many customers. Now, all the customers don't have to build all these different environments. They don't have to have multiple servers on their own. Now you can actually leverage that service. So the main benefit for me would be the control. I mean, customers will, will always bring in, from a security perspective, broken, vulnerable web applications. Um, for right. us, us as admins, I mean, how do we mitigate those up risks and, and that's posed a, by those that's applications? That's a good point because you have both sides. If you turn around and say, well, every department, you have total access to what you have on there, aren't you putting the other customers at risk? You can't, everybody can't have pure access, even though the skill sets are needed, maybe to focus on the teams to manage those infrastructures. But it's, it's double-sided. Yeah, well, with infrastructure as a service, I would have access, right? As, as if I'm a server admin. I could there SSH in or RDP into my box, uh, create some sort of, so I have OS level control and implement my host based mitigation. These are the discussions because if you're looking at a true managed service, you don't want to give RDP to customers. You have to provide that service for the customer. Can they change their content? Can they update their data? Sure. But you don't want 20 customers changing things on that server that are supporting all those 20 customers. Well, I could have a couple clicks of a mouse button and revert back to the original right through, through the web portal. So like in Amazon, you, you could upload your VM to Amazon or choose from a template and you got root access or local admin access. You could deploy your application. You could, if your application is vulnerable, you can't really, you're not a developer, you can't fix the code. You could put in some, let's say for example, an ISAPI filter on the web server. So that's an example of a mitigation. I could, when I touch an OS, I can implement my own mitigation. That's where we have a lot of examples where people insist on the dedicated service because they need that control. But if we're looking into a true shared service, there'd have to be something you're giving up for the sake of cost. Yeah, so but usually when we get into dedicated servers, and the customer's choice is what I'm always told, so you do whatever they want, but they don't build out the environments because I can't afford that many servers. Quiz, what did they just say? <laughs> uh, a lot. So I, I wanted to ask one more question of the group. Um, how many people in here by show of hands are uh, maybe one to two years away from uh, applications uh, in the cloud or uh, applications as a service, software as a service? One, two, yeah, three. Okay. 
All right, then. Um, any other last questions? I think we're uh, just about 30 seconds past our time here, and I know you guys want to get down to the uh, general session. I appreciate uh, everybody uh, indulging us this, this uh, question and answer and interactive format. I think it's uh, been beneficial for, for me anyway. I hope it's been beneficial for you. And I hope that you're getting uh, everything that you need to get out of this, uh, this cloud forum. Thank you.